Right now at six, the Metro's unhoused community is being pushed around. I've been through about 40 something sweeps. And some say two city led programs are working against each other. Whereas STAR is there to help people, it says there to punish people. We have a 360 look at ways to solve one of the Metro's biggest issues. Inflation is impacting everyone's wallet. When the prices go up, our wages don't catch up, we lose our real income. And a move to help combat rising prices could set some people back even more. My fear is that for middle-income Coloradans, it will be harder for them to get the mortgage that they need in order to afford that home. Plus, the Avs have Lord Stanley's Cup on their minds. We'll break down the keys to beating the Oilers. And we begin tonight at 6 with a live look from our Mile High camera. This is overlooking downtown Denver. It is definitely cloudy out there and some much needed rain is falling across the front range today. Good evening and we're so glad to have you joining us tonight at 6. I'm Andrew Hill. And I'm Tom Mustin. We start off with Chief Meteorologist Mike Nelson. Mike, as Ann mentioned, rain on the front range and snow above 10,000 feet and we sure do need it. We do, and Tom, there's even reports of snow down to about 8,000 feet elevation right now. It may drop to 7 overnight tonight, but it won't get down into the city. This is City Park, which is a wet and gray scene this afternoon, and it is a chilly night out there. 48 degrees the top of the hour here in Denver, 43 up at Leadville, 51 at Fort Collins, 52 at Greeley. There's the main band of rain expanding over northeastern Colorado. It's going to be a good soaker for much of the northeast plain. And we have winter weather advisories for the mountains, generally above 9,000 feet. But as I said, the snow will get down all the way to about 7,000 feet for tonight. It's not going to last super long, but it will last through the night tonight. So a wet and cold night tonight. Good soaking rain, northeast Colorado snow for the mountains. Wet weather ends Wednesday by midday. Warmer and drier weather for the rest of the week. I'll have details in about 10 minutes. Thank you. It is no secret that homeless encampments across the metro are growing. And while some city run programs uh, provide resources and services are helping, not all are hitting the mark. And tonight we have a 360 in-depth look at what's being done locally and statewide to address the issue. We'll mainly focus on the city of Denver's street enforcement team. Some say it's focusing more on enforcement than help. We will also see how it stacks up against the STAR program, since both are community respondent programs. Denver 7's Micah Smith kicks off our 360 in-depth coverage. A sign notifying unhoused citizens of a planned cleanup. I've been through about 40 something sweeps. Ryan says if he sticks around after the sweeps, he knows a ticket is likely to follow. I've been threatened. I haven't received one because they can't ever catch me. The they Ryan is referring to is Denver Street Enforcement Team or SET, a civilian based unit with the power to issue tickets for violating Denver's urban camping ban. One of our concerns is that SET has been conflated with STAR. Vinny Cervantes is on the Community Advisory Committee for STAR, the Support Team Assisted Response Program. STAR sends mental health counselors and paramedics to low level incidents. This is there to connect people with services, with treatment, with any kind of help that they need. But, but set is enforcement. Recently, the advisory committee launched a public campaign to formally differentiate between the two civilian led programs. The committee released this statement saying in part, the set program and criminalization of homelessness stand contrary to star values. We reached out to the city for its response to the statement, but did not hear back. We did find this Denver task force to reimagine policing January meeting in which Denver's director of safety Armando Saldate responds to set criticisms that they harass and that they somehow, you know, that, that that's well, I, I disagree with that. I'm out with them. I've seen that. I've seen the engagement. I've seen what it looks like. I've seen the help that we are providing folks. Yes, I've seen folks that don't want the help. I suffer from PTSD, bipolar disorder and high cases of anxiety. So when the police are doing the sweeps, it freaks us out, I guess. And Cervantes says this is exactly what Star doesn't want. Citizens avoiding all authorities and skipping out on the help the Star program is designed to provide. Reporting in Denver, Micah Smith, Denver 7. 
And both SET and the STAR program are receiving more money to expand. Earlier this year, Denver allocated more than $4 million to expand SET. $1.4 million was also approved to expand the STAR program. And the STAR Advisory Committee plans to address the city's Department of Public Safety tomorrow. And finding ways to address homelessness is really a metro-wide priority. The city of Aurora modeled its own STAR program at the city of Denver's, and it's been a success. But Mayor Mike Kaufman says he's still receiving complaints about panhandlers across the city. Just this morning, Kaufman shared his thoughts in two tweets. He claims panhandlers are getting increasingly aggressive. He also shared a picture of a woman who he says is walking through stop traffic near Chambers and Hamden. Kaufman says he's researching what other cities are doing to address the issue from a safety perspective. And let's give you some more context on why programs like SET and STAR are so important. Police departments across the state are experiencing a shortage of officers. According to a survey by the Colorado Municipal League, more than 80% of cities with their own police force are having issues with recruiting. Half the cities with their own police departments are also having a hard time retaining officers. So let's talk about solutions to the issue. At the state level, state lawmakers have made it a priority to provide more funding to help connect Coloradans with services. Today, Governor Polis signed House Bill 1377 into law. This creates a new program within the Department of Local Affairs to award grants to local governments. The bill also directs the General Assembly to appropriate $105 million to the fund. That money will be used for services for the homeless recovery care and housing programs. An escapee from the Platte Valley Youth Services Center in Greeley is back in police custody. This is 17-year-old Juan Osegueda. Jeffco deputies say a correctional officer was bringing Osegueda to a dental procedure in Lake Lakeside, and deputies say he stabbed that correctional officer multiple times and escaped. Well, after four hours on the run and neighbors being told to shelter in place, Osegueda was found in the garage of a house near 43rd and Eaton in Lakeside. And that correctional officer does not have life-threatening injuries. He is expected to be okay. A Fort Collins police officer has been arrested on charges stemming from a domestic violence incident. 31-year-old Valerie Pedraza is booked on third-degree assault charges and domestic violence. After a protection order was put in place against Pedraza on Sunday, deputies say she continued to contact the victim. Pedraza has been with Fort Collins Police since 2019. She has been placed on administrative leave pending the results of an internal investigation. An Arapahoe County judge has dropped criminal charges against Broncos wide receiver Jerry Judy. The DA requested those charges be dropped. The Broncos first round pick back in 2020 was arrested earlier this month following a dispute with the mother of his one month old child. According to court documents, Judy put the woman's wallet, baby formula, and the baby's medical paperwork in his car and locked it. The district attorney cited a lack of cooperation by the victim as a reason for dropping the charges. President Biden met with Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell today in the main topic of conversation, inflation, and ways to bring prices down. The Fed has signaled aggressive interest rate hikes are coming to help combat rising inflation. How will that impact hardworking Coloradans who are dealing with a skyrocketing housing market? Here is Denver 7's Megan Lopez. There are so many numbers floating around these days, from interest rates to inflation, things that make the economy tick but can be confusing for the average family. The question on most people's minds, what does all this mean for my wallet? For that, we're in a very interesting moment. We spoke with three experts, Scott Wasserman from the Bell Policy Center, Chris Brown from the Common Sense Institute, and Kishore Kulkarni from MSU. Let's start with inflation, something you've probably heard a lot about and even felt. What we've seen in the last 12 months is that inflation is now running really hot. Supply chain issues, labor shortages, the war in Ukraine, and an increase in money supply are all contributing to that inflation. And as a result, the average family has spent nearly $4,500 more on goods since 2020. Inflation has a disproportionate impact on lower income families. And in inflation, when the prices go up, our wages don't catch up, we lose our real income. So the best way to help them is to bring it down. Very common way to respond to inflation is by raising interest rates. And if the interest rate goes up, then we borrow less. What you want is stability. And when you don't have stability and you have uncertainty and rapidly rising prices, 
This puts a crunch on, on everybody. But raising interest rates to help middle and low income families is a double edged sword. It prices some families out of the market for a home and limits the buying options of others. New home buyers face this double hit. This time last year, mortgage rates were at 2.95%. This month, they're around 5.1%. So a family buying a $375,000 home will pay about $370 more a month on average with those higher rates. My fear is that for middle income Coloradans, it will be harder for them to get the mortgage that they need in order to afford that home. But it's important to remember once inflation is back under control, interest rates will likely fall again, making housing more affordable, but more importantly, bringing down the prices at the pump and for the food on your table. Megan Lopez, Denver 7. And according to the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, food and beverage costs are up 8.8 percent overall in Metro Denver. Meat costs are up 14.5 percent over the past year. And it really isn't clear yet what is happening with housing costs. All right, check out this video. It was taken by 1984 giant slalom Olympic gold medalist Deb Armstrong. And she Ooh. captured this mama bear and her three cubs walking across the Butcher Knife Trail in Steamboat Springs. Now that trail connects Old Town Steamboat with the middle and high school, so it's full of kids each morning and afternoon. Now the bear was unavailable for comment, but this is a good reminder that bears are particularly active right now. Car theft victims are being re-victimized trying to get their car back. You get your car stolen and then you have to pay to get your vehicle out of the impound. After countless complaints to contact Denver 7, we push for changes by local leaders. In general, I think towing in the state of Colorado is exceptionally predatory. And the Avs are on the ice in Game 1, the Western Conference Finals. We'll look at their chances against the Oilers next in sports.